once again we will be discussing about the VI characteristics, the voltage and current characteristics of resistor, inductor and capacitor. So, in JNTU, every time we will be asking, derive the relation, VI characteristics we will be asking. So, simply VI characteristics of R, L and C. That is resistor, inductor and capacitor. First, we will be discussing for resistor. For resistor, the voltage equation V is equal to I into R. This is from Ohm's law. I am having the V relation V is equal to I into R from Ohm's law. I am having I is equal to V by R. This is the current equation I am having. Now, when we are coming to the electrical power, when I am coming to electrical power, I am having P is equal to, my electrical power is equal to the product of voltage and current. So, Vi into cos phi, where cos phi is nothing but simply, it is the angle between voltage and current. So, generally we will be taking, cos phi is equal to 0 we will be taking, so that I am having cos 0 is equal to 1. So, directly I can write P is equal to V into I. So, the power equation in case of the resistor, P is equal to V into I. It is the product of voltage and current. Now, in this equation, if I am substituting, if I am substituting, in the place of V, if I am substituting, P is equal to I into R into I. So, which is equal to I square into R. R P is equal to, in the place of I, if I am substituting V by R, which is equal to V square by R. This is the relations what we will be getting. So, the voltage equation V is equal to I into R. Current equation I is equal to V by R. The electrical power, it is defined as the product of voltage and current and cosine of the angle between voltage and current. For the time being, we will be taking the angle between voltage and current is equal to 0. So, that my cos 0 is equal to 1. So, my power P is equal to V into I. So, in the place of V, if I am substituting I into R, so P is equal to I into R into I, which is equal to I square into R. Or P is equal to in the place of I, if I am substituting V by R, V into V by R, which is V square by R. So, these are the VI characteristics for resistor. In the same case, we will be deriving for inductor. We will be deriving for inductor. In the inductor, as we have said, from the definition of the inductance, I am having L is equal to N phi by I I am having. Here, what we have done when I have cross multiplied, L into I is equal to N into phi I am having. From this equation, I am differentiating. L into di by dt is equal to N into phi I am having. From Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, I am having voltage V is equal to N into, so here, I will be writing this as N into d phi by dt, which is equal to d phi by dt. So that what will happen? V is equal to L di by dt. The voltage across the inductor is given by V is equal to L di by dt. Now the same expression can I write as dt is equal to or simply my di is equal to V by L into dt can I write. Here I am cross multiplying and writing. Now here I am integrating on both sides. When I am integrating, integration of di is equal to 1 by L integral V into dt. So, integration of di is equal to i. i is equal to 1 by L integral V into dt. This is the expression for the current in inductor. i is equal to 1 by L integral V into dt. Now, when we are coming to the inductor, as we have said, inductance it is the property of an element which opposes the change in flux or current. Or simply I can say inductor is a storage device. So here when I am coming to the power or when we are coming to the power equation. So what I can write is, can I write 
a power is rate of doing work which is equal to P is equal to dW by dT I will be writing. Where dW by dT is a small amount of work done in a small interval of time dT. Now simply this can I write as dW is equal to P into dT can I write? I have cross multiplied and I have written. In the place of P, my dW is equal to Vi into dT I am having. dW is equal to in the place of P, I am substituting Vi. So already we have V is equal to L di by dT I am having. So in the place of V, I will be substituting. So dW is equal to I am taking out into L into di by dT into dT I am writing. dT dT will cancel. So dW is equal to L into I into di I am having. Now to get the total work done, integrating once again, integrating on both sides. When I am integrating, integration of dw is equal to L into integral I into di. So here, when I am integrating, what I will be getting here? So w is equal to L into I square by 2 or simply I can write w is equal to half L into I square. So this is the total amount of energy stored in an capacitor, in an inductor. The total energy stored in an inductor is given by W is equal to half Li square. And here, as we have said, resistor is a dissipative element, whereas inductor and capacitor are storage devices. My inductor will be storing the energy at the same time. My capacitor is also store the energy. So here, so simply what we have done here, we have derived expression. So here what we are having my inductor, inductor from the definition of inductance L is equal to N D phi by E, D N phi by D T we are having. So there we have derived I is equal to 1 by L integral V into D T and we have written power is equal to D W by D T, small rate of amount of work done in a small interval of time. Now when we are coming for the capacitor. When we are working for the capacitor, what will happen? So here, we will be deriving the expressions for capacitor also. I am having for the capacitor. From the definition of the capacitance, we are having charge stored in a capacitance is directly proportional to the voltage. So Q is equal to CV or DQ by DT is equal to C DV by DT I am having dq by dt is i which is the rate of change of charge is current so i is equal to c dv by dt so the current in a capacitance is given by i is equal to c dv by dt now the same equation if i want to write dv is equal to i by c into dt i am writing here once again i am integrating on both sides when I am integrating on both sides, integration of dV is equal to 1 by C integral I into dt. Integration of dV is V is equal to 1 by C integral I into dt. So this is the voltage equation for the capacitor. The current across the capacitor is given by I is equal to C dV by dt. The voltage across the capacitor is given by V is equal to 1 by C integral I into dt. Now, when we are coming for the, as I said, capacitor is also a storage device. It will be storing the energy. Here I want to find how much energy is stored. So once again, I am writing P is equal to dW by dt. Power is equal to rate of doing work. So in this place, I am writing dW is equal to P into dt, which is my dW is equal to Vi into dt I will write. And I am having the equation for current in a capacitance is given by I is equal to C dV by dt. In the place of I, I will be substituting C dV by dt. So dW is equal to, uh, I am having V into C dv by dt into dt I am having. dt dt will cancel. I am having dw is equal to cv into dv. So to get the value of w, once again integrate on both sides. When I am integrating, 
integration of dw is equal to c integral v into dv integration w is equal to c v square by 2 so here i can write w is equal to half cv square so this is the total energy stored in a capacitor is given by w is equal to half cv square now i can write the different equations why because here I am having, I am having Q is equal to CV I am having or C is equal to Q by V I am having or V is equal to Q by C I am having. So here if I am substituting in the place of C, W is equal to half into Q by V into V square. In the place of C I am substituting Q by V. So here this will be equal to half Q into V. This is one more expression what I will be getting for the total energy stored in a capacitor. Or W is equal to half in the place of C, C only. In the place of V, Q by V. So simply Q by C whole square. So which is equal to half C into Q square by C square. So 1, 1 C will cancel. So 1 into half into Q square by C. This is one more expression what I will be having.